Welcome to Ireland AM from the Ploughing Championships here at Rathaniska in County Leash. Who doesn't love a bit of Mike Denver and his band at 7 o'clock in the morning? Thank you very much, Mike. Mike's going to be here entertaining us right throughout the morning. We are here at the Aldi tent, live from the ploughing. If you're planning on attending the ploughing, like about 300,000 over the next few days, make sure you drop in and say hello. We're live until 10 o'clock this morning. And what a show we have lined up for you. We have footballing legend Ray Houghton will be dropping by for a chat. And also, he's going to be doing a pizza challenge with the one and only Toto Scalacci a little later on. Yeah, a pizza challenge between two footballing greats. Um, and speaking of sport, rugby legend um, James Ryan is dropping by a little later also. And uh, we're going to be chatting to some of the suppliers about their business and how Aldi is helping them. Now, do you want to get going again? Let's hear it. Derek is here also at the ploughing this morning. Derek, where are you? I am indeed. Uh, do you know what? Scalacci at the plough, and I'm sure that'll go down a bomb after he knocked us out of the work up. Anyway, good morning. I know you're having a great time up there at the Aldi tent. We're down here at the entrance gate because it's already jam-packed here this morning. It's a drawing settle start. Rathaniska and County Leash is where we're at for the next few days. Not only is it the Irish ploughing championships, it's also the world ploughing championships. And as you mentioned, Al, over 300,000 people here expected over the next few days. Uh, already pretty busy. Mary, what time are gates open to the public? Gates are open to the public at 9 o'clock. Derek. Security, I believe, is tighter than the Queen's funeral. <laughs> Back to you guys in the studio. <laughs> Mary's going to stop you. <laughs> Mary's like, you're not oh, coming in. My the next Denver, Scalacci, Ray Howden. I tell you what, I'm devastated we're here in studio. I, just Alan, Scalacci, oh, Ray Howden and that. James Ryan. Like, Who's that? <laughs> James Ryan, rugby player, right. <laughs> uh, yes, we have got a great crop of guests here in studio too, so please stick with us as we're going to plough through the next few hours. Okay, and that's it. We're going to stop him now. After eight, we're going to meet two people who have been to hell and back. Johnny Ward and Blona Tracy. Talk taking part in TV's Toughest Challenge. And from cheesy tunes to box office disasters, we're going to chat to you about some of the pops, pop culture's biggest flops. Yeah, like Batman what? and Robin with George Clooney. Oh, yeah, that it was, was a shocker. It was meant to be a big thing and it was a shocker. I was thinking one actually last night, uh, King Arthur. Do you know the oh, Guy Ritchie one? I really liked that movie. Disaster. I I'm so really excited for it. it was, yeah. No. I liked it. We'll talk about them a little bit later on. Plus, with only one in four GP practices capable of taking on new private patients, we examine the issues facing GPs in Ireland. But uh, it's a busy old show coming up. But first, let's get the news in the Virgin Media News Hub. Here's Cleon Russell. Thanks, Tommy. Good morning. A guard a car was rammed in Dublin yesterday evening after officers were called out to respond to reports of dangerous driving. Guardi arrived in the Cherry Orchard area shortly after 7.30 and found cars driving erratically. Both cars failed to stop when requested to do so before one collided with an official guard a car. No injuries were reported. Guardi are appealing for witnesses to come forward or anyone who may have dash cam footage. No arrests have been made and investigations are ongoing. Pensions are expected to top the agenda when the Cabinet meets this morning. Pensioners could soon be in line for five different rates of the state pension, depending on the age they retire. The plans going to Cabinet today would see mandatory retirement ages abolished, with state pensions set at five different levels. It's thought that from 2024, someone who chooses to work beyond the age of 66 would be entitled to €15 Euro per week for every year they work. It means someone who chooses to work until they turn 70 would receive 60 euro per week more in their pension. The plans are being brought to cabinet today by the Social Protection Minister Heather Humphreys. It's a new era in the United Kingdom today after Queen Elizabeth was laid to rest. But what does the future look like under the reign of King Charles? Well our news correspondent Richard Chambers reports from London. 
Well, Britain waking up this morning outside the Elizabethan era. Queen Elizabeth II lay to rest in Windsor last night after a state funeral in London which saw hundreds of thousands take to the streets and the biggest gathering of world leaders seen in modern times. But the eyes now turn towards the future. King Charles III takes the throne at the age of 73. He has made Ireland and reconciliation key themes of recent years, including multiple trips to Ireland, including one to Mullochmore in County Sligo, where his mentor, Lord Mountbatten, was murdered in an IRA bomb attack. But there are question marks about the future of the monarchy. A number of states which currently have the British monarch as the head of state have indicated they're looking towards the exit doors, including Antigua and Barbuda and Jamaica as well. With Britain also uh, in a situation where there is all a lot of political instability over Brexit and other issues, including the cost of living crisis, if Prince Charles does have a reputation as a uniter, that is thoroughly going to be put to the test. Two people have been killed and another two have been injured in a shooting at a bar in the US state of Washington. It happened in Kenosha, where the same bar was the scene of a shooting that left three people injured less than a month ago. The victims have yet to be identified and no arrests have been made. Local residents say they heard a series of gunshots during the night. You could hear them from their cars just screaming, they were shooting, they were shooting. Why were they just shooting? And it was a lot of confusion. Uh, you know, where's so and so? Where's so? -and -so? I mean, frantic, panic, um, screaming. Um, where's where's such and such? It was so and so that got hit. It was, you know, it was just chaos. It was sheer chaos. Taiwan is recovering from a powerful earthquake. The 6.9 magnitude quake hit the southern part of the island, toppling buildings, derailing trains and destroying bridges. Tanya Wright reports. This dramatic footage shows the moment when badminton players ran to safety as the roof of the gymnasium collapsed. The 6.9 magnitude earthquake shook Taiwan, with most of the damage appeared to be in the north of the epicenter on the southeastern coast of the island. This security footage shows the moment Yuli Township in the Hualin County was struck by the powerful quake with people running to safety. The city saw a three-story building toppled, trapping four people inside, including a 39-year-old woman with her five-year-old daughter. They were all later rescued safely. Rescuers had to rush to the scene after a bridge collapsed. According to the local government, three people whose vehicles fell off the bridge were rescued and taken to the hospital. Tanya Royt, Virgin Media News. And finally for now, the National Ploughing Championships return today after a two-year absence due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Around 80,000 people are expected to attend each day of the event, which takes place over today, tomorrow and Thursday. Gardaí have appealed to drivers to follow signage and colour-coded routes when travelling to the venue and not to follow directions on sat-navs or other in-car navigation devices. For car insurance, van insurance or home insurance, call the Quote Devil. Unless, of course, you've got money to burn. Yes, Joe, day one of the ploughing here in Rathanisca and County Leach. We're joined now by all the Daily family. Hey! hey good morning. Where are you from, Maria? Uh, we're from Scart to Glyn. Scart to Glyn and Kerry. In Kerry, And what yeah. have you got at home? We have a dairy farm. And who's milking them this morning? Um, no. <laughs> you don't know. You don't care. <laughs> Dad, what has he up so early, Jeremiah? All the family want to come early. So good man does it. He's too old and age just brought. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, enjoy your day, Cheers. folks. Cheers. Thanks for Cheers. chatting us here this morning. On <laughs> Ireland AM. Off they pop. Anyway, nobody look at weather slipping past 7 o'clock here this morning. And it's a draw and settle start for day one. The ploughing here in County Lee should be glad to hear elsewhere. Uh, good deal of cloud cover with some nice bright spells now pulling through in those light to moderate southerly, uh, southerly breezes. Now, right across today, in fact, uh, it is looking pretty good for many areas of the country. We'll see a couple of hit and miss scattered showers, but certainly plenty of sunshine on offer now this Wednesday and again it is holding dry and settled down here in Rathaniska in County Lee. So good news for anyone heading this direction uh, today. Top finally is about 14 to 19 degrees and it will be humid in some spots. And finally then tonight a little bit of light rain and drizzle through western and northern spots. Elsewhere it's that mixture of clear skies and cloudy conditions with overnight lows back to 7 to 11 degrees. So that's how it's shaping up here in Rathaniska in County Leash at the moment. We'll catch you back live at 7.35. 
For first-time drivers, young drivers, returning drivers, if you've had an open claim or have had too many penalty points. The quote devil's always got one hell of a quote. We're sitting here, we're trying to do our maths on the pension because there's a front-page story about how they're going to give you more money if you don't retire. But coming up after the break, do you know who will have the answers? Anton Savage. She'll be rounding up some Just of the, the top man. stories in this morning's papers. Talk to you in a minute. You're very welcome back to the show and join us to take us through the stories making the news this morning is Anton Savage. Good morning to you, Anton. Morning, Tony. Um, well, I suppose we'll start off at the front of a couple of papers this morning. Social Protection Minister Heather Humphreys were expected to announce a pension system overhaul. Yes. And the, the core of it is an incentive scheme to keep people in work longer is what it boils down to. And the way it's going to work is if you're currently at the pensionable age of 66 years of age and you retire and you take the state pension, you get 250 something euro a week. 53, yeah. yeah. There are thereabouts. What this system is going to do is it's going to have a ramped up series of increases. So the longer you stay in work, the more pension you'll get all the way up to 70, and if you retire at 70, you'll get, I think, 357 or 356 uh, a week. So you stand to make... 315. 315, yes. right. So you stand to make about 70 quid-ish over what you would if you retired at 66. Now, of course, the other side of that is you won't get the pension for that four years that you otherwise would have got it. So yeah. it's very swings and roundabouts for the individual, but because you will be staying in work for that period, you'll end up with more money at the end. Yeah, so that's that's basically it. Keep you in work longer so we don't have to keep on paying your pension. You will get a bigger pension. We've already gotten the tax from you for those few years. Exactly. Excellent, thank you very much. And it's one of those... Th First of all, the, the challenge underpinning all of this is what do we do with an ageing population? Because there's a sense that the um, life expectancy has been going up since the Middle Ages. Mm -hmm. It actually hasn't really until recently because life expectancy is calculated from birth. So back in the Middle Ages, your chances of making it to 20 very slim and because you had a huge amount of people who didn't make it it brought down the average but if you made it to 20 in the middle ages you'd probably make it to 70. That's been the same until about the 50s when we started to get this big yeah. climb in longevity and now you've got this situation where people instead of having the good grace retire at 66 and pop your clogs at 70 <laughs> we're all insisting that we keep going until our 90s and somebody has to pay for it so this is Because it. I was reading something recently that in another generation or so they're talking that somebody could go on to live to 150. Correct. Do you know what I mean? So, I mean, if you're going to be getting the pension at 66, that's a lot of money that's to be paid. Lot. And there's, so, two, there's two things in that. One is your kids currently, if I have this right, have a life expectancy of over 100. That's the norm now. You're TikToking when you're 100. You'd be like, oh, lad. <laughs> but how are we going to pay for all this? And then the thing is, is that this is just dragging it out a bit because it's not that they're delaying it. They're still going to... They're going to up the money well, you'll as each be year work. goes on. You'll be working. Be but you're still going to be getting net more money. Uh, is it 70 euro it, per week? It comes week, out as week a sort more. of a wash. When you, when you take the extra money versus the shorter time it'll be paid, it seems to be in and around the same. But Mern's point is right. You're going to be in work in that period, so they're going to be, for the vast majority of those workers, taking the tax back from them. But the bigger problem that you outlined, Tommy, is not only are people going to be living that much longer, but they are living through the most expensive period in their lives. Because mm. when you're zero to about 50, you pay a bucket of tax. Yeah. You pay health insurance, you pay all that. Once you get into your 70s, that process reverses. Now you're actually using the health system that yeah. you largely ignored before. You need much more supports in your life. I mean, not uh, I, I look paid forward for it. to receiving Absolutely. it myself. Yeah. Yeah. But as that period extends, that becomes a huge challenge. And it's a big challenge here. Big challenge in the US. The funding of, of Medicare and Medicaid for the elderly in the States has become a massive problem. Yeah. So all the way around the world, this is an issue. The one wow. thing that I would suggest, though, that we need to be interested in this is whether or not it has the intended consequence. Yeah. Because any time you root at something like this, you can have suddenly unexpected uh, results. There's a lovely example of it in the book, um, Freakonomics, yeah. where they talk about a crash which had late problems. So all the parents, there was, a, let's say 5% were showing up late. Yeah. So the crash brought in a fine. If you show up late for your kid, it's a 20 euro yeah. fine. What immediately happened was all of the parents showed up late because they suddenly went from feeling guilty to feeling it's a service I can pay for, it. there's 20 quid, I'll be late. Yeah. Oh. And they doubled their problem. So there's regularly instances where by intervening in a, in a process or in a market like this, you can have unintended consequences. So we'll see but what there, happens. But this isn't about increasing the pension age. You can decide to stay on, that's it. They're not enforcing it on you. What do you make of this? Would you like to be working on until you're 70 so that you would get um, an extra 
60, 70 quid. 0896 111 We'd oh, love we. to hear from you this morning. We're going to move on to um, the next story, which is Irish pubs are very worried about what's coming with the increased cost of living. And yeah, their, Vintner say it their is. Their future. Yeah, that it could be make or break time, particularly break time for an awful lot of pubs, given the cost of energy, given the cost of energy, and given the cost of all their inputs. There's not much I would have thought a pub can do to limit their energy exposure. Um, if you're turning on lights, if you're heating a building, you can't say to your punters, well, it's going to be chilly in the pub, bring a coat. There's yeah. an expectation. Likewise, if you're running ovens and cookers, you're kind of caught. And the Vintners Association are saying we are getting to the point where pubs are going to go to the wall. Uh, exactly. I mean, four in ten Irish adults are saying they're going to go to the pub less. It's quite concerning. And um, you can see that they're... I think it was Leo Bradker spoke over the weekend, though, is how they're going to try and help... They're going to bring in a lot of grants that we saw during COVID to, to help businesses and potentially help pubs as well. There, there is a reality under all of this, though, that we, we tend to talk about euphemistically. When we talk about rising interest rates and getting hands around inflation and driving inflation mm. down, mm -hmm. what that actually means is we are going to contract the money supply and make everybody poorer. Yeah. That's what it translates into. Mm -hmm. So the objective of current monetary policy is to take away your money and make you spend less. Yeah. This is one of the first evidences of it in, in action. There is an intro, because we were talking earlier on and it's the first thing, you know, my fellow does when we go to wherever, whatever pub it is, it's like, geez, that, po that point was only 4.20. That's great. Because in some areas it can be up to 8 euro. 8 euro mad. for Guinness in oh. Dublin at the moment. Yeah, like just 8 less. euro. I was talking to um, an owner of a, a student sort of a pub and he was like, no, 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 they don't buy drink. They, uh, there's a societal issue, problem here as well. And he's like, if you can buy three pills for a tenner, you're not drinking anymore because it's just gotten too expensive if it's eight euro for a drink in a pub. So this is another thing that we're not thinking of. It is the proliferation of drugs and the, the cost of them in Ireland that, that, that students are going for rather Absolutely. than drinking. People say that it's easier to find than... But Absolutely. Can, can we focus on the central scary part of that, which is eight, uh, eight euro, euro for a, a pint. I know. And I know. this is the norm now. In Dublin, I think there, there was a, a, a survey in one of the papers today saying that the cost of Guinness in the Temple Bar pub in town is eight euro. The cost of Heineken is eight euro forty. Can you buy a round of four for four people and four, or five people is 40 quid? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, well, you, uh, no wonder I never around, leave my couch. My friend got around the other night, it was 52 euro for but four in, people. But when the vintners are coming out saying, oh, like we need to, you know, we're, we're shocked that less people are going to the pub. I mean, are you really surprised? But of mm. course, for them, they're getting the costs from electricity, gas, for everything right. else, and of course, bringing it in, and tax as well. Let us know, actually, is this something that you're seeing at home? Are you right. not wanting to go to the pub anymore? Is it becoming too expensive? And you're trying to save that uh, that few quid in your pocket as well. Listen, we have to go to this story. Yes, sorry, um, this is the, the first story in the news. This is uh, the oh, Garda yeah. car rammed in the Cherry Orchard area last night. I mean, the footage of this is pretty shocking. I and mean, we were talking with the, the guards last week wanting to get new martial arts training. So I this mean, is the footage here. We've got to, we've had to blur out an awful lot. So it's um, a car is racing through Cherry Orchard and the sounds in the background are people just saying, ram him, ram him, ram him, ram him, ram him. And you will see that happening uh, very shortly. This was all over social media. It happened. The guards have issued a statement. They are looking for people with dash cams. They were called to the area at 7.30 p.m. last night. There was only a guard that car there. There's no armed response unit working. Correct. And there's, there's, I assume, two guards sitting in that two car. Two guards sitting in people there. And Frightened. they quite correctly get themselves out of the scene as quickly as they can because it'd be hugely risky for them. I mean, the notion of this, if you want to do this kind of crack, go buy yourself a racing car. You get it cheaper than the two cars that they're busily wrecking out there and see if you've got some real talent. Pulling handbrake turns in the middle of a suburban area where there's kids out in the evening, where it's still daytime, and then deciding you're going to wreck a guard the car that the rest of us all have to pay for. Uh, it, it's it's shocking. I mean, sure. And I just think it's frightening for the guards having to go into an area like totally. that where there's a group of youths that they know are out to cause mischief. And, of course, they're stuck in a car knowing that they don't really have any support and they can't really get out and do anything as well. Sure, and even and if you bring the armed support unit, there's a limit to what they can of do as well. Can. So yeah. all you can do is by sheer force of numbers, you get the public order guys in and you put 30 or 40 guards into the area. But then all you but do is you stop like it for one night and it kicks off again. And it's like a lock, like it's like a military situation. And obviously this stems from societal issues, things that haven't been done, deprivation in an area, nothing being done. And it carries on to something like this because we all know with sentencing that an awful lot of times nothing happens. You know, but listen, so Joyride is probably the, nothing new the, either right. at the same time. Like, this has been happening for years. No, 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 I Do get that. I mean? But it's all, it's all tied up into deprivation of an area. And, and so. there's, I mean, at the heart of it, 
if you're doing that, it is because you have nothing better to do. And providing the something better yeah. to do would be a good thing. But nonetheless, once you get to that end result, you're saying, yeah. Listen. If you're a guard and you can't afford to pay rent in Dublin and that's what your face would going to work every day, oh. why would you become a guard? Let's talk about a bit of a brighter story. Uh, Anton, yes, that would did be you nice. go to Garth Brooks? I went to Garth Brooks in 1994. <laughs> oh, we've got an OG. I got in on the so game. good, I didn't oh, yeah. have to go again. Correct. <laughs> well, there's a lovely story in the Irish Star this morning about a baby. So a lovely couple, Gerard uh, and Rebecca, um, ended up having a baby. They went to the concert on Sunday the 11th, and they've come home with a little baby called... Like Bonnie. Bonnie Brooks. They're thinking about calling Bonnie her Brooks. Brooks. Yeah, but the thing is, Rebecca said that... Um, so she struggled out at Crow Park. She wasn't feeling the best. Then they said they go home to her mum's <laughs> house. Not and drag to the Garth Brooks experience. She wasn't sure yeah. feeling the best. They were meant she was like, to go oh, to the second here. weekend, and then they said, "Oh, that's a little bit too close to the the due dates. We'll move to the, the, first, the first weekend." weekend. She, Garth and then, Brooks, the thunder rolls. Oh, hey. obviously, yeah. <laughs> she went home to her mum's house in um, in uh, uh, Drada on the way home to their place in Cavan, and she says that her water's broke on her new floor. Mammy, we hope that it's okay. Do you remember there was a, a thing back in the 70s and 80s where you would play Beethoven and Bach to the baby to try to stimulate right. intellectual development? I wonder what effect exposure to high volume <laughs> Garth Brooks has. Now well, we know. Long -term this said over in was in Louisiana. He did a concert, 105,000 people were at it. And they all, and they all, they all gave birth to a baby. <laughs> 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 they said it showed on the Richter scale the, the movement. That's anyway, what happened. Congratulations, Savage, Rebecca. Congratulations, guys. And little Bonnie Brooks. Anton Savage, <laughs> as always, thanks for joining us. Thank Thanks so much. Well, can you believe it? It's been three years in the making and finally, the ploughing championships are back. Oh yeah, all the crowds are there. And you know what? Who better to mingle oh. with the farmers and the livestock? He just seems so comfortable Loves in it. it. It's our very own city boy. <laughs> Alan, how are you getting on? You're, you're with your people. Yeah, and uh, we're in, I'm in my element here down in Ratanuska in County Leash this morning at the Ploughing Championships. I really am. We are here in the Aldi tent and if you're planning to come to the Ploughing this morning, make sure you drop by the Aldi tent and say hello to us because we are live here until 10 o'clock this morning. And we are joined now by an Irish footballing legend, a legend, <laughs> no, no less than Ray Houghton. Good morning yeah, to you, Good morning Ray. to you. How are you? Now, well. you've been here before, so you know what it's all about. Yeah, I, I went about 10, 12 12 years ago to the Ploughing Championships and I've got to say, just coming through the gates this morning, it brought back some very Memory. good memories. Yeah, I mean, the enormity of it and the opportunity for the Irish businesses to showcase yeah. what they are about. So I'm really looking forward to going ar around later on, having a walk around and speaking to a few it's, of the... It's like a village, it's like a small town. Hey, well, I think it's a bit bigger than that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the size of the, uh, the, the tent that we're in at the moment. And what phenomenal. has you here today? Well, we're going to be having a pizza challenge. That's what we're, I was on. saying, we were saying it earlier on, I was going to say, now, the one thing I think Ireland DM needs on a, on a Tuesday morning is the pizza challenge between Ray Helton and who? And Toto Scalacci. There we go. <laughs> Why who not? Else? Yeah, but a bit of a rivalry between the Toto and myself from back in the day because he, uh, he scored the goal in 1990 that knocked us out of the World Cup. Yeah. We did get a little bit of luck back in 94 when we beat them 1 0, but. Um, yeah, I'm, he's a fantastic fellow and I'm looking forward to the challenge. We're all, we're all looking forward to that a little later on. Let's talk about Italia 90 and just, I mean, we all have memories and I know there's people watching this morning who, the memories of Italia 90, then 94, but like the country came to a standstill. Yeah, I mean, it was, we went to the Euros in 1988, which was a, an unbelievable achievement, but then to qualify for your first World Cup yeah. ever uh, was unbelievable. Then to reach the quarterfinals, playing against the host nation uh, playing in Rome. Yeah. Uh, it was absolutely phenomenal. And unfortunately, we didn't quite believe in ourselves. We just didn't get over the line. They ended up beating us 1 0, but what an experience. And did you, were you as aware at just how much the country was behind us at that time? Yes, we certainly did. Uh, we had some footage uh, in the hotel where we were staying, and it was just showing us exactly what was happening uh, back in Ireland. And it's amazing when you want to be in two places at the one time. Yeah, you wanted you, to be back You want to be playing there, but you, yeah, want, yeah. you want to be back and join yourself. <laughs> yeah. so, it was, a, it was an incredible time, an incredible time to be part of the national team. And I, th I think for supporters who went over to Italy to watch the, the national team play, they were fantastic. I mean, the reception they got from the Italian supporters yeah. and all the supporters around the world was absolutely phenomenal. And then I remember, I remember so clearly then, the, the whole pictures of his meeting the Pope. But that was down to Jack Charlton. Yeah. Well, and Mick Byrne, Jack had said to 
And Mick, if we get to, to Rome, then I'll get you an audience with the Pope. Never for one yeah, second an audience that we were going to do it, but that's exactly what happened. We, we got there and, and Jack was true to his word and got us that audience and it was absolutely brilliant. I know, and then for Ireland to go, oh my God, the team are meeting the Pope, they obviously thought you were going to get to the finals and win at that stage. <laughs> well, we, were, we were hoping, we were hoping yeah. it didn't quite materialise that way. I mean, and then we were talking about 94 and I mean, because I was just saying that, I was chatting to somebody yesterday and they said, oh, you have to ask Ray and it must be one of those memories, that wonder goal against Italy, as you mentioned. But I mean, people sort of say like, it, is it one of your favourite memories? It certainly is. I mean, we were actually at uh, Sorrento Pizzas yesterday at their factory. They were showing us around and all the work that they do, and it's absolutely phenomenal in collaboration with, with all the... And it was all Italians there, so me going in, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, was, I was the only sort of Irish there, apart from Stephen, yeah. uh, one of the owners as well. So it was brilliant to go and speak to them about the, the World Cup, and particularly 1994. It brings back unbelievable memories for me to, to score the winning goal when I wasn't supposed to be in the team, but then you get the opportunity yeah. to, to start and then 12 minutes in, yeah, the ball just sits up beautifully, you hit it with your wrong foot and the emotions that go through, th goes through your head. First of all, I thought it was going over the crossbar, then I thought the goalkeeper was going to save it and then when it hit the back of the net, what a wonderful what a, memory. Yeah. A, a, a moment for everyone. And what about Jack? I mean, we adopted him, he was one of our own. What was he like as a manager? Uh, very tough. Uh, but you knew where you stood with Jack and he was phenomenal for me. You know, when you think of, you know, a young lad who I was playing at Oxford United, had a career internationally, Jack took the gamble on bringing me in in his first game uh, against Wales and 11 years, 10 years with Jack, I, I couldn't have asked for more. It was the making of me as, yeah. as a player. Uh, and he was phenomenal for everyone who represented Ireland. You know, he was very loyal to the players that he wanted to start in the matches. And I what, got 73 caps under Jack and, and Mick McCarthy. So I, I couldn't thank him enough wow. for what, everything that he did at that particular time. And it's a huge loss that he's passed away. Oh, yeah. No, it was a, we, we, we did a, a big uh, a tribute to him on the show. And we did a whole a night of, of dementia. We raised a yeah. million euro oh, on, on Virgin Media. Well yeah, you well know, done. so uh, it was, it, we, we felt very close to him as well. Um, can I ask you then about the current Irish team and especially the women's team under Vera Pau? I mean, oh, I, I think they're one game away, aren't they? They're yeah, one game away from yeah. qualification. That, that would be absolutely brilliant. And it just shows you, you know, how far the women's games come. Uh, and, you know, it's great for... I was in Cork at the weekend, and the amount of youngsters that was playing football, there was a big game going on. They weren't interested. They just wanted to play on the side. Must have been up as a 200, 300 yeah. youngsters playing football. And now it's both genders, male, male and female. So that is just shows you how much the, the game is growing here in the, When you see England and all uh, recently, the women's game, I mean, it's yeah, just... Yeah, but that's, see, I think that, that, that's great for the women's game now. It's elevated to, to new heights. All they need new, now is sponsorship to come in to make the game flourish, get the younger element coming through, at 8, 9, 10, 11 years of age. The, you know, when they look at the older age group and see how well they're doing, they want to emulate them. That's no different to when I was a, a youngster. Yeah, yeah. And, and my peers, I wanted to be like them, and that's very similar to what's happening now. So it's great to see... Now we just need the backing. We need some money coming in just to grow the game at an even quicker rate than that. Well, do you know, it's been lovely chatting to you this morning. We can't wait for the, the pizza challenge. The pizza challenge is one to stay tuned for with Toto Scalacci a little later on. But now it's back to studio. Oh, thanks very much, Alan. Ray Houghton, what? He's such a treasure. He is such a treasure. It's like he's right, he was right there. Um, I always think of the bicycle kick, don't you? In, uh, in 1994. Classic. Amazing. Classic. Classic. Thank you very much, Al. We're looking forward to the pizza challenge with Scalacci. <laughs> <laughs> coming up later on. Now, coming up with over 700 GPs that are set to retire over the next six years. Incredible. We're going to discuss the impact this is having on local communities. Don't go away. This is quite a frightening statistic. Ireland has 30% fewer GPs per head of population than England and fewer again than Canada and Australia. It's, uh, GPs are saying this is going to be a massive issue over the next few years. Here to discuss the pressure this has put on Irish GPs is Dr Madeleine Dolig from the Irish College of General Practitioners and Dr Ilona Duffy, a GP in Monaghan. Thank you both so much for joining us today. Madeleine, if I can uh, start with you, the numbers are stark and Australia issued 391 visas to Irish doctors last year. What is the outlook for Irish GPs looking like? Well, at the moment, it's looking pretty stark. Uh, it's estimated by the HSC themselves that we will require 1,600 additional uh, GPs by 2028. 
but we've only had a in net increase of 146 new trainees since uh, 2017. Uh, and then when we're looking at the fact that approximately 700 GPs are due to retire over the next five years, really the sums don't add up. We have to look at this really uh, carefully. The HSC need to take this seriously. The FNB cuts they imposed on general practice in 2009 uh, slashed our budget by 38%. And at that time, we saw GPs leave in their droves and they didn't come back. Uh, the, the young GPs left in their droves and more mature GPs uh, also found uh, that their business model was uh, crashing and we lost mature GPs, experienced GPs to Canada, the Middle East and Australia. Uh, and really, unless something, uh, if, unless the HSE really look at this imaginatively and listen to us in the IMO that um, and uh, tr and try and attract our GPs back, but also train more GPs to take up uh, the reins, because uh, particularly after the pressures of COVID, uh, or the uh, workforce in general practice really is at an all-time low. Madeline, can I just you just said something there which is quite frightening that. So only 146 GPs have come through since 2017. Why is that such a few number when we're seeing so many heading off to the likes of Australia, particularly with the amount that are retiring? So in so in July 2022, uh, the uh, there has been 258 new trainees. So but the net increase since 2017 has just been. Um, 146 because when you take into account uh, uh retirements and uh that that's why there isn't so we're not replacing the gps that we are losing and then with our the population growth uh since uh, in the last 10 years we have a, a, a much different uh, population that we had uh before uh, the family cuts and so all of this is adding up to a pretty much with disaster. The young GPs are leaving because they're looking at much better terms and conditions in Australia and Canada. Uh, they they can take the maternity leave, they can take sick leave if it's required, and they can take annual leave. Nothing's guaranteed here at all. Uh, and we're finding that young GPs are really reluctant to take on lists or what we call lists in general practice, which is basically to take on a partnership because uh, they are not guaranteed any of this leave. And our young female GPs are actively saying, no, we're not going to do this. And we need to be guaranteed to take maternity leave if we, if we decide to have a family. This is just bonkers because you think in a country, you know, you're entire certainly in Ireland, we've got maternity benefits, but when you can't find a locum to take that, Elona, you're on the ground in a GP practice in Monaghan, and we know that it's getting increasingly hard for people to get a GP when they, they move to a new place to get on the list of a GP. Um, can you tell us what it's like there, the day to day? Because a lot of us just think, sure, you're a GP, you're making loads of money, it, it's grand, but that's not the situation. Well, I think as Madeline has said, general practice has changed so much in so many years and that I'm in practice 20 years. My dad ran this practice and stayed working until the age of 86. He only retired last September because we couldn't get a replacement for him. And while general practice is a fantastic career, and I think any of us who are in it love the whole aspect of the continuity of care, knowing our patients and being there for every aspect of their medical needs, it has become more demanding, both in the length of our days. Most GPs are working 10, 11, 12 hour days in the demands placed on us because so much of the medical care has been transferred from other places like hospitals, other community care, health care providers saying, go to your GP, see your GP. And we saw that during COVID, general practice really manned up and took over the whole thing of referring patients for COVID, managing COVID patients and keeping the show on the road. So we can do it, but as Madeline says, we need more of us. And again, I suppose the aspect of those who choose general practice has changed in that um, the relative is that when my dad's day, he had my mum at home able to do all of the, the childcare, all of the extra stuff. So if he was working 12 hour days, that was fine. There was somebody else there. Life is different. Most families have two parents who are working. So it's not just possible for that, you know, one person to give their whole life to a career in general practice. And that's also what we're seeing. We're where our younger GPs are saying, well, look, at, I'll do those long days, but I'm not going to do five of them a week. I'll do three or four a week. And that also means that with those GPs, the 700 GPs at the ICGP, say, are going to retire in the next five years, 
we we don't just need 700 GPs to replace us. We probably need well over a thousand to replace them if we're saying that many of these GPs won't be doing five days a week because that's just too long. Also, as Madeline has said, the demands on practice have changed. We are seeing a rapidly rising elderly population and they have greater health care needs. We're also seeing others coming to our country have greater health care needs. So all of this needs time. So as you said, what's happening in the practice? Every day we have emails, we have letters and we have people calling into the surgery saying, can you take us? on. And unfortunately, we're one of 80% of the practices in the country whose lists are closed to new patients. So yesterday, I mean, I had an email from a woman who's pregnant due her baby in a few weeks and cannot access a GP anywhere. So that's not just not being able to get care for herself, but also care for her baby. Wow, it's just shocking to think of this. Madeline, quickly, like, is there, is there, what, what is the solution? Is it just the case of we need to just get more people through the system or do they need better pay? Like, how do we rectify this? I think that, it, well, certainly, uh, there, it, it, there isn't just one measure. There has to be a suite of measures to support our, our GPs and to make Ireland attractive for them to come back and uh, and also to choose general practice as a career. As Alona said, it is a very fulfilling career. Uh, but I think it, much as the way the IDA support um, new enterprises in Ireland, we need to support young GPs. Uh, with their business model, we remember that they often come out of, of uh, college with uh, and out of training with big with personal uh, loans from college and have to look at mortgages and setup costs in general practice have, are, are substantial. Uh, and the HSC need to uh, guarantee that we're not going to go from boom to bust as we have in the past because there's a huge amount of, of uncertainty. So they need to take that uncertainty away. They need to help young GPs with setup costs. They need running costs. Uh, so tax breaks for running costs uh, and I think okay. certainly we need to I'm get locals in to look after our, our sick leave, annual leave and maternity leave. It's a really frightening situation and Liz, thank you so much for talking to us this morning uh, and we'd love to get the viewers thoughts on this 0896 111 yeah. uh, Alona Duffy of course, GP Basin and Madeline Nidalig, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Plenty more coming up after the break. <laughs>someone who should be crowned an inspirational county hero. Together with Gala Retail, we're celebrating the achievements of others whose incredible efforts have had a real impact on our communities. Gala is gifting 26 county heroes with hotel stays worth €1,000 for every winner, be it the local charity fundraiser or sporting volunteer. We want to hear about your inspirational county hero. To nominate, simply tell us why they are so special in under 200 words on gala.ie forward slash inspiration awards by Sunday the 2nd of October. You'll struggle to put 200 words together on me on that, won't you? <laughs> Special. He is an inspiration. <laughs> That's it. It's done. I'm done. Uh, it's time now to take a look at this morning's papers. We'll start with the Irish Times. It's headline, Queen Elizabeth funeral crowds gathered to witness last roar of vanished empire. The long public life of Queen Elizabeth II drew to a close as she was laid to rest in the family vault in St George's Chapel at Windsor Castle after a private ceremony yesterday evening. Retire at 70 to add 60 euro a week to your pension. That's the front page of the Irish Independent. People who work until they are 70 will receive a weekly state pension of 315 euro under a radical overhaul of the pension system. The examiner leads with that same story. Their headline, pension boost for working until 70. Retire at 70 for an extra 60 euro in pension is the top story on the Daily Mail. The mirror goes with pint of no return. Drinkers are turning their backs on pubs in their droves with almost half deciding not to head to the pub over the cost of living. The sun leads with in the name of loaf. Bono has told how he would nick his shopping as a poor kid living in Dublin. The Herald goes with cop swoop on Kinnahan Thug. One of Ireland's most feared criminals has become the second man with alleged links to the Kinnahan cartel to be arrested in Spain in the past week for money laundering offences. And finally, the star leads with Berth Brooks. A couple have told how they went to one of Garth Brooks' sellout Dublin concerts this month and came home with a newborn baby daughter. And a huge congratulations to Garoth and Rebecca. That's Listen them there with little Bonnie. the paper. Congratulations, the paper. Congratulations guys. Congratulations, guys. It's been a nice news. That's it what we really need. It really is. I tell you, what a great concert. And the end was amazing too. So I'm so sorry you missed the end of it. <laughs>
<laughs> she gave birth after the concert. Uh, now, the pension system overhauls the yes. front of a lot of the papers this morning. We're expecting Minister Humphreys to come out and give us an update mm. on this. A lot of texts in about this. Uh, morning, guys, agree people should be allowed to work longer if they wish, but I think they should be allowed to work a few hours a week and still get their pension. I'm a nurse, definitely can't see me being able to do it far into my 60s, let alone 70. That's yeah. from Marie. Yeah, absolutely. It'd be tough, very tough hard. going. Yeah. I suppose it's kind of if you can kind of diversify. If you're a nurse, would you be able to go into the labs and work there so that you wouldn't have to do all the backbreaking work with patients and keep yeah. on going? Um, a message that says, why isn't the minister looking at the welfare system instead of pensions? It's a disgrace. After six months on welfare, if you can work, your benefits should be reduced. People need to be able to retire and enjoy life. The focus should not be on them, is what Lorraine says. Uh, but to be fair, they are... OK, yeah, OK. Uh, the, uh, pension, uh, the pension will still stay the same, the money. A quick one there, just by Linda. She just said, I'm absolutely in favour of working on until 70. I've just turned 60 now and got into the pension scheme far too late. So she's in a panic now trying to save for retirement. And with the escalating uh, costs, it's not easy. And I'd say a lot of people are in that situation as well that actually never thought about getting into the pension and all of a sudden panic stations. I did too. I was 37. Two years ago was when I started my pension. Yeah. I just, I, I It's can't... kind of one of those things, yeah, I do it, you know, I, I put know. it off. Sure, it's no good anyway, but uh, it does help. Listen, get in touch. 0896 111 We'd love to hear from you. Absolutely. Now, after the break, we find out what happens when you take a panto prince and a broadcaster and you sign them up for the Special Forces. We'll talk more about that very shortly on our day. Now, you're very welcome back to the show. Our next guests have brave, grueling conditions, exhausting challenges and intimidating DSs. And that's not an Ireland M. So that was in the name of charity. Look, it's slightly more hardcore since the last time we saw them. But do you know what? They don't. They look lovely. It's <laughs> lovely to have them. Blooded Tracy and Johnny Ward. Good morning to you. How morning. are you doing? Good. All that was everyone sitting at home going, if they didn't have a clue. You're in Hell Week. Yeah. You're doing, you're doing Hell Week. Ultimate Hell Week, yeah. Why? 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 <laughs> I know. He's asking that question. Why? And we kind of asked ourselves that the first day when we arrived, and they kind of put hoods over no, our heads and threw us in the back of a van. But what honestly, when you got for? the phone call, yeah, because I'm not joking. Someone was trying to sign him up, and he was like, "Nope, it's not, not happening. A hell. Not yeah. a hope in hell." What? When you got? Why did? Why? I got, well, I wanted to do it. So for lots of different reasons. I think everybody had lots of different reasons. But another one of the, one of the other reasons for me was um, the last couple of years have been so hectic and so out of our hands, and so. I don't know, it's just, I just wanted to do something completely different. I've been very frustrated and we've been angry and there's been so much going on in our lives in the last couple of years. I kind of just wanted to, it was almost like this was going to be a release and I was able to just really throw myself into something, focus on something and kind of do it for myself in a way and, that, and my family as well. You know, that way I wanted to do something that maybe people would feel proud of me. Um, and you know, I don't know. It was kind of a weird one. There, it, the last few years have been really difficult for everybody, I think, for lots yeah. of different reasons. And it was just, it was just a different focus for me. And then I arrived, and then there was loads of rugby players and <laughs> GAA players and giant muscly men like this. I was like, why am giant I here? Muscly <laughs> men. He's, so, he's very muscly. Stop. He was pointing stop. at the guys like, behind oh, the camera. Oh, stop, stop you. it! You. So we actually, I think we have a clip of the two of you in action. So sure, let's have oh, a quick dear. look at that. Oh well. <laughs> Take that mask off, you're going home. I was taking inspiration from um, from my sister-in-law uh, for that part, because uh, like one of the reasons why I wanted to do this in the first place was uh, was kind of for her, because she passed away in 2020, in December in 2020. I kind of, I was sort of talking to her in my head, and I was like, right, Claire, just get me up these steps, get me up the steps, and I actually do feel like she was there with me, sort of willing me on. All on your back, up here, on your back, crawl. Where are you going? Where are you going? Over that way. The heavy muck. Jesus. Let's get a facial. Down you go. We were crawling literally at one stage through s***. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> we were, were. We were so smelly shit. after that. We were crawling through that, yeah, definitely. Blonde, you spoke there, like, you did yeah. get quite emotional yeah. about that. Yeah. What was it? So you, you talked about wanting to make your family proud, but yeah. there was a huge amount, and I think when you're tired and you're out of sleep and you're being pushed to the yeah. absolute limits, yeah. you need to find some sort of inspiration. Yeah, so... 
Um, sadly, a couple of years ago, my sister-in-law passed away and watching my husband and his whole family kind of go through that grieving process, I actually was just, I was just so inspired by them and so kind of in awe that they were able to keep going because when something like that happens, like, how do you keep going? Yeah. How do you find the strength? And I just kind of was thinking about my sister-in-law, Claire, and thinking like, okay, if, if they can try, if they can do this, this is nothing in comparison to that. Mm. Like it was horrific and it is hell on earth, but it's literally, it's not, you can't compare it to losing a loved one. I'm so. very sorry for your loss. I know that can't imagine how horrible that is for your family when something like that, but with that in the back of your head, mm. you're right, it puts everything in perspective. It does, like it that. does. But also this is a challenge that's on the television for our entertainment, Johnny. <laughs> that, that, that is what it is. It's no crack, like even, you know, sometimes you look at shows and they're like, ah, oh, they're definitely fine, they're grand work. They're, this they're is, staying in no, a hotel no, around the corner. Yeah, that's what, you know, you're fine. And I think, you know what, and you asked, you asked there a second ago, you know, when we got the phone call, I originally declined. I said it, and then I just thought of the, you know, similar to, to Blonde as well, went through an awful lot during the lockdown, you know, heartbreak, grief, loss of family members, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then I suppose it was very easy during the lockdown to pick up a bottle and watch Netflix and just, you know, not do anything. And then it was just like, I, I kind of look after myself, let's do something. So I kind of just substituted bad habits and I suppose the usual work routine with fitness. And I just trained like an absolute animal nonstop. And then when this came up, I thought, oh, I'm wasting my time. I rang Jay Carter, I rang Ryan Andrews, I rang Peter String Stringer, who already did it. And they all advised me 100% do it. It is hell, it's absolute torture but you will look back and you'll be really, really proud of your achievements and you will make friends for life. And I have to say, not just saying it because she's sitting here beside me. When I got the phone call about this yesterday, they said, you know, talk about some of the people who, are, you know, really, really helped you. I would have been abs I would have been gone without Blonnet, without the administration. <laughs> I was useless. The physical, mental, all that kind of stuff, I was all right. I kind of trained myself. Yeah. The administration... Right, you have a tent. Two minutes, it better be up. We'll be back. And I'm like, I, 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 I don't know. You know when you're on the Ryanair flight or Aer Lingus, put your light belt on first and then secure everyone else's. That was Blonda Tracy in that place. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, I'll just do mine. Give me one minute, I'll be with you. I'm like, <clears throat> did my tent, did my administration. Do you remember the thing where you have to jump out? The bag the packing and all that. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Oh, my God, to make sure everything's flowing. if the bag isn't packed right, then everyone has to, like, get into the squat position for 10 minutes. Yes. So, but, selfishly, I was doing it so that I didn't have to get but tortured. I mean, <laughs> being surrounded on my left, because Oshin, the poor guy who got the absolute crap kicked out of him, this is the jockey, <laughs> Remember the first episode? Yeah. It's just we're all moving, all blindfolded, <laughs> and your man just goes oh. right across the head. We didn't even know what happened. But to be on, blinded on my left and Satanto happened on my right, oh. I felt very, very secure That's and safe hands. And like I do, like <laughs> made friends for life. How? Eric Donovan has a boxing fight up in uh, Belfast in Europa this Saturday. Loads of us are going up. You know, we really, really yeah, have. Like the last season, they, they all came like... to see coppers. It's mad, it's isn't it? It's like dancing to... with the stars as well. They kind of, everybody... That's gets better than bomb. that. It's much better but than that. It's like that. a bomb you get from something yeah. like this. And whenever you put... How, how did you train from it? Because, yeah. <laughs> like... <laughs> I'm definitely different to these guys. <laughs> so, I, so I got a personal trainer and he kind of put me on a regime. So my whole thing was I wanted to get stronger. So building my muscles, eating loads, trying to train. It's so funny talking to a rugby player saying this is what I was trying to do. You, I but wouldn't just, know where to start, even yeah. start for so this. You, it's all about kind of cardio and stamina and all and but at the same time you kind of can't train But how it. long did you because I'm just like how yeah. long did you have you get the call and it's like we're going to film like how about long did you have? Three months or something but three I months. got COVID in the middle of it so that was uh, great wasn't it? Great. So that, that really kind of took the wind out of my um, cells. What is like how because I know that they can ring they can wake you up at any time. Yeah. Oh. There's like, one time that, like, literally, there is one time and we get about, this is no word of a lie, about 50 minutes sleep. 50 minutes sleep. And they come in, blaring speakers, playing Valkyrie. Ba, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. And all that training yeah. that we've done, you know, similar to Blonde, I was training all the time as well, but not with 90 minutes sleep. And, you know, with the people who had been on it before, they said, oh, the food, the food, you know, it's... it's it's very, very small portions. The food was gorgeous. It was fine. It was it gorgeous. Was just, it was horrific. It was slop. It was a warm pot noodle. <laughs> but, like, it, it was doable to get through. The sleep so to college, do that. It's uh, fine. Yeah. Oh. Right. But you're also I, I, wet the whole time. You're cold, you're wet, you're hungry, you're tired, and you're the, disorientated. The first night. Yeah. And Blonde had set up my bed. Thank you once again. And I was just like, what do I do? Number. Oh, God, what's her Because if you say their name, they'll call oh, you and they'll kill you. Yeah. They will kill. Do you know what? A lot but of people like... watch this and they kind of think, ah, they're getting paid, you know, it's grand. But, but it, this is all for charity, though, which is really special. Yeah. You're put through torture. And, and it's women's aid as yeah. well. Yes. You raise money for. Yeah. Like, 
did that make it worthwhile as well, trying to go as far as you could to raise more money for your charities? Absolutely. So I would have, I've done a little bit of work with Women's Aid and we all know the incredible work that they do. They are paramount in changing the laws in this country to save women's lives and save families from incredibly dangerous situations. So that obviously was a driving force in the back of my mind as well. And I wanted to, if I could, try and inspire women that, you know, you don't always have to be physically the strongest person in the world to be strong. Mm. So I was kind of trying to do that and raise awareness because Women's Aid, they need all the help that they can get. Mm -hmm. It's such an incredible charity. And in fairness, we're all raising money for really important yeah. charity, charities. You're who's your charity? Uh, Capital Day Centre. Do you know what? I didn't actually go in with, I just went around. No one was doing anything for the homeless. And I just thought, you know That's what? Every cute. single time you do a Christmas pant or whatever, homeless outside, it's Capital Day Centre. It's non-funded by the government. And Brother Kevin is a, a And we don't know how long you're going to go, obviously. You're you don't know. Oh, yes, yes. As long as you beat the rugby players, I'd be happy. <laughs> <laughs> that what you want. Um, and Lana Tracy's a big mammy. Who knew? Who knew? Didn't expect this at all. Uh, the Irish mammy, mammy in the making for everybody. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was so weird. It's like I, I substituted my own brothers. I've got four brothers, so I substituted all of them with all the lads. With everybody were, I know. <laughs> um, Ultimate uh, Hell Week, The Professionals. Uh, it's on Wednesday night on RTE1, Lana Tracy and Johnny Ward. Thank you both so much for joining us. Thank you. Great, Terry Cheers. Guy, so enjoyed that. I definitely wouldn't do it. Now, after the break, Alan, don't see Alan do it. He's going to have a chin wag with Irish and Lenser rugby star James Ryan. Don't go away. See ya. Now, Alan has been live at the National Ploughing Championships in Leash all morning. And he's joined now. We've been waiting for this for, God, <laughs> a long time by an Irish rugby star, finally an finally Irish rugby one. star on the show. Who have you got, Alan? <laughs> yeah, we have a proper rugby star on the show this morning. Sorry, Tommy. Yes, uh, James Ryan joins us. Good morning to you, James. Morning, Thank you for coming. And by the way, we are here at the Aldi tent at the Ploughing Championship. So if you are around, if you're dropping down, drop in and say hello to us. We're live till 10. Good morning to you. Good morning, Alan. I, I'm good. I mean, I'm talking to a rugby player, but I have a cookbook in my hand. Yeah. Explain why I have a cookbook in my hand. Um, so that was a cookbook set up by um, Aldi and, and, and Irish Rugby. So um, it was a great initiative. Uh, all profits went to Bernardos uh, to help vulnerable children and their families. And uh, kind of, I suppose all the recipes are designed by Morris McGee. And so he's our high performance chef uh, with the Irish team. And, um, a lot of my teammates have, have spoken about him before. Yeah. Uh, he's incredibly good. Uh, so there's a ton of recipes. I think there's over over 70 there, recipes there. There's loads of them. Now, I've, in fairness, I'm looking through it, and some have gone for quite simple dishes. But yours, yours looks a bit complicated. You're a, a soy and ginger steak with hoisin roasted mushrooms and fried rice. <laughs> yeah, look, that's my go-to. Is it your go-to? Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, Mine would be one of the better ones. Um, <laughs> Mine's one of the better ones. I think Paul O'Connell's one is chili con carne, which is a bit basic. Yeah. Uh, but mine was, uh, was but a bit it, more, yeah. It is a great initiative, and as you say, Barnardo's benefit from it, so that's, yeah. that's brilliant. So yeah. um, if, you, if you can get that, you uh, definitely do. Now, I mean, we heard Tommy calling, uh, chatting to you earlier on, and he was saying he was calling you the big cheese. Where did that come from? Uh, there's no, there's no massive story behind it. One of the lads kind of called me at one day, um, and it, it just kind of stuck a little bit. Uh, well, when it really stuck was uh, when I started playing with the Irish team in 2017, and um, a lot of the lads would have called me Jay Oran. At the time, we had John Ryan. Uh, you know, he's played for Munster in Ireland many times before, and he was kind of he was the Jay Orr of the squad. So. Uh, uh, Joe Smith was kind of asking if I had any other nickname, and one of the lads kind of shouted out Big Cheese, and, and once yeah. Joe started calling it, uh, you know, once it's a head stuck. coach starts calling it a nickname, <laughs> it, stucks, uh, it sticks. So um, since then, I've been kind of the Big Cheese for a few of the lads in Ireland and Leinster. Now, we know you had your, your injuries, and I think Tommy's going to chat to you in a, a little while about that, but let's just go back to the summer and that amazing victory over New Zealand. It was incredible. The whole country was glued. Yeah, it was a brilliant few weeks, um, a special few weeks, and you know we got to create a little bit bit, bit of history which is which is why you play and um to see uh to see how it, how it kind of energized and uh, and gave so many people a lift back home is, yeah. is is what it's all about um so uh so it was brilliant and at the same time sport you can't stand still you got to keep pushing on and, and improving because everybody else is so um, it feels like a long time ago now, and I think we've kind of turned the page now and are looking ahead. I mean, and we are looking ahead, and obviously there's another World Cup coming up, and Ireland are number one in the world at the moment, and we were number one going into a World Cup that didn't go so well, so how are we feeling about going into this now with, with that title, with that um, position? 
yeah, I suppose we just don't really buy into the kind of rankings. Um, you know, it doesn't mean a whole lot to us. We, we try not to pay too much attention. You know, we want to we want to be winning um, you know, trophies and titles and things like that. And um, you know, not really, uh, you know, not not as much. Um, you know, what what the ranking says, uh, if that makes sense. Well, there's a, there's a man back in studio who wants to have a, a little chat with you, Tommy. That yeah, we have a, a proper rugby player here this morning. <laughs> to join as well. Can James, you hear us, Tommy? Uh, James, the big cheese. Listen, great to chat to you this morning. Um, listen, I have to ask you, though, with Ireland, the incredible success of Ireland in the summer against New Zealand, like, we are ranked number one in the world again. We're a year out from the World Cup. Like, what's the difference this time going into this World Cup than the last time back in 2019? How are we going to build momentum this season? Um, as I was saying to Alan, I think we just got to keep getting better. Um, you know, we, uh, we've, we've kind of turned the page at this, at this point because, as I said, everybody around you is getting better. So we just got to keep pushing on. We've got three massive games in November. Um, you know, we've got the World Championships, World Champions Africa coming to town, obviously Fiji and Australia as well. So um, I think, um, you know, we'll have a, a great idea of where we're at then. And then we've got the Six Nations to look forward to as well. So. Um, yeah, we just got to keep uh, keep pushing forward. And uh, tell me, listen, it's going to be a long old season. I mean, I mean, you've played some amount of rugby as well. Uh, what did you do for the time off? Did you have a nice holiday? Where'd you go? Sunning it up? Uh, yeah, we, we had five weeks off, which was brilliant. Um, so uh, I was barely in Dublin for the full five weeks. So I was uh, I was in Italy with my girlfriend for a couple of weeks, and then um, I was in Spain with a few of my mates. I was back home for a couple of days, and I was back in back in Spain for for a cousin's wedding. So. Uh, you know, five weeks is great. Um, you know, it was, you know, sometimes you need it after a long season, you know, just to kind of recharge physically and, and mentally. And uh, it was great to be able to kind of get that chunk, uh, chunk of time to, to relax. Um, but we've been back uh, a good few weeks now and uh, the season's back under full swing. Um, so I'm looking forward to a, another big season ahead. And James, sorry to go, to go back, but when you had that incredibly successful tour of New Zealand, you had a job on the tour that he would have been terrible at when he was an international rugby player. You had to collect the fines from when the players were misbehaving, shall we say? What? What? Like, who, who were you collecting fines off? What were they who doing? Who gave you the most? So there was a sheriff's department that consisted of myself, uh, Ty Furlong and, and Peter Manny. So, look, uh, we just uh, kept an eye on everybody and we had to make sure that if anybody stepped out of line or if there were, uh, there, uh, if there were any misdemeanors that we were, they were dealt with um, How much were pretty, the fines? pretty harshly. And what were the fines? I, I, don't know, I don't know if I could say it on air what the fines were, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> look, we, that's what a tour is all about. You obviously spend a lot of time together when you're yeah. away uh, and it's just... It's, you're, you're trying to create a great atmosphere with, with the lads, so it was one of the things we did. Well, listen, uh, James, thank you so much. You're, you're going to stay around here. You're going to have a, a little I'm, wander around. I'm going to have a bit of a look, yeah. There's a great atmosphere here with, down with Aldi here, so um, uh, we're going to have a, have a look and, and, and have a, see what's going on. Right. Do you want to stay for the pizza challenge between Ray Helton and Scalacci now? <laughs> That's worth having a look at. Listen, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, back to studio to you guys. Thanks, Thanks very so much, James. Thanks very much, Alan. OK, you were definitely fine loads. I was actually on the fines committee one time <laughs> with Donnick O'Callaghan <laughs> and Tomas o Can you imagine them spending it all, not and on drink, on sweets? No, you we know had so much money. <laughs> and I had to go off myself and Tomas in the middle of the Six Nations. We had to go off and get loads of, like, T-shirts and funny costumes and stuff. And we ended up going for a pint. <laughs> And ended up having a rake of pints we drank all the time. In the middle of the Six Nations. In the middle of Six Nations. He was so Park. professional, everybody. Yeah. You were put on the so fines all committee. All the fines money was gone. You were there put you on the Did you pay it back? I don't think James Ryan would have done that. He's a proper professional. <laughs> He's a proper professional. I'll get more out of him about the fines in just a little while. But after the break, from Mariah Carey movies, oh yeah, to <laughs> One Hit Wonders, um, a new podcast wants to know your favourite flops. We'll talk to you very shortly. Now, in pop culture, what is a flop? What is a flop? Do you not ask yourself that every single day? No. Here to tell us, <laughs> and we're robbing her off the six o'clock show, it is Fanula J. Good morning, Fanula J. How are you doing? Good morning, guys. How are you? So you're leaving, you're leaving, you're no longer talking to Martin and Karen. You're just coming over to the dark Come side in. of the morning. Yeah, that's Come like... On. You're going to eat... 
You're going to get me into worse trouble now, honestly. Well, I've, listen, I've you're in the worst trouble already right that you're not over. here in studio. <laughs> We're an <ain't> impressed. <laughs> you're at home in Cork. Sorry, next time. Next, next time. time. Next time. I, um, I'm, I'm minding my gorgeous sister for a few days and then I'll be back. So if you want me in... You, you won't be able to get rid of me, essentially. Good oh, idea. she's just given her notice to the six o'clock show. Lovely, fantastic. <laughs> we'll see you on Ireland AM. Fanula, let's talk about your brand new podcast because you've been off the, you've been away from the podcasting world for a while. Delighted to have you back. Flop culture, what, what's it all about? Yes, so flop culture is all about our favourite flops, as you alluded to in the intro. What is a flop, I hear you ask? Um, flop is kind of colloquially used to mean failure. It actually goes all the way back to the 1800s. But I suppose we know it as, you know, talking about like box office flops. Some of the best examples I would have would be, you know, maybe Waterworld for anyone watching at home. The movie that they spent so much money on and it ended up being really bad and it did really badly. And um, so basically, I just want the podcast to be a place where people can come and, you know, talk about trash that is otherwise not talked about, not praised. They could sit down with me for 60 minutes. I get to learn about their favourite flop, whether it is a movie, a one hit wonder, as you mentioned, a one and done reality show, an album. Someone did a chocolate bar and a celebrity wedding this season. So it's as broad or specific as you want. Can What's I a ask? chocolate bar? Well, What's we'll come to that. We'll come to them. Like, I, I just want to check though, like it's, because you said a flop is a failure. So I presume you don't want to have the podcast just kind of discussing failures as well though. Is that kind of, you know, you don't See, want to make light of failure. Yeah, here's the thing. It's kind of, the title's a bit clickbait, right? Because I think people expect it to be a bit of a mean podcast in which we're, you know, dissecting this failure, which we are in a way, we can be critical. But as I said, I just want it to be a space for people to talk about the things that they are obsessed with. And the thing with the word flop is, it's kind of, as I said, it's had this transformative few years where now it doesn't actually even, as you said, what is a flop? Like I have uh, friends who'd call their favourite pop stars flops and they don't mean it in a mean way. It's used kind of in a colloquial, like fun, friendly way. And I suppose because the range of flops is so broad, uh, it doesn't even have to mean that, you know, it's something, it can be something that's like critically failed, like commercially failed, mm. like whatever it's it's so broad and as i said it's just for someone to come on and talk about the thing they love that no one else will talk to them about i will listen essentially <laughs> if you need me for to talk about fool's gold the movie matthew mcconaughey and kate hudson yes that's a great one fool's gold i'm also kate and leopold the one with hugh jackman and meg ryan i'm there for that last christmas what else monster anything to do with j-lo and her terrible movies Oh, I like, well, uh, yeah, okay. I would spend all my time there. So, Monster in Law, is that one? Monster in Law with Jane Fonda. Monster was so good. Oh, that was Michael, good. It was really good. It was not a flop. It was considered a flop because commercially it wasn't that successful. I Who think it's See, fantastic. this is what I mean, Tommy. You say something and it's like, that's not a flop. I want to have that debate with people. <laughs> I want. Let's go. So who decides, like, the topics that you're going to discuss? So I get my guest to pick one and they might have a few and I usually try and pick the one that maybe I'm less familiar with because to be honest, I find that more interesting. Like this series, we did uh, an episode on Bond. We did on Her Majesty's Secret Service and I'm not a Bond person at all. Uh, but my guest is really into Bond, really enthusiastic. We kind of dug into the franchise, who he'd like to see as the next Bond, etc., etc. So it's been really interesting because for me, it's like almost... A learning thing for me that I get exposed to all these kind of new things that I wouldn't have before. So and, and that's interesting. that movie has been reevaluated because when you watch it now and you see it's actually quite a, the the kind of closest to the source material Bond. And as we discussed earlier on, there will it's not on Her Majesty's Secret Service anymore. There will be His no more Majesty. of that. His Majesty's Secret Service. That's what Bond is going to be from now on. What um, a flop! What. Come here. Can you, yeah, James Bond, such a flop. Um, what You mentioned a chocolate bar. How is a chocolate bar a flop? So this was very interesting. For the most recent episode, I sat down with Victoria's Secret. She's a drag artist. And she came to me and she was like, have you heard about the Cadbury Snowflake and the tie-in oh. with Anthea Turner, the presenter? Yes. There it is in all its glory. So when Anthea Turner got married uh, in the early 2000s, she had a magazine deal with OK Magazine for the wedding, obviously, as was done in the day. Um, but the magazine was paired with a promotion with Cadbury Snowflakes so that everyone got a free bar 
and the wedding pictures, their pictures, her and Grandpa Ovi, they're eating the chocolate bars. Um, and basically this was like kind of the earliest form of influencer spawn con. This derailed her career, right? Because people were like, how can you sell out your wedding like that for chocolate, blah, blah, blah. And now you have celebrities like Nick Jonas had every aspect of his wedding sponsored. He had e-scooters for the stag. There was sponsored drink, sponsored hen and bachelor. Like it was just... She talks about it. She's talked about it most recently about the impact it had in her career and how people spoke about it. It was it was so interesting to dig into it, especially now when we see the way celebrity endorsements have evolved, yeah. I suppose, over the years. Poor old Anthea Turner. I can't wait to see what Spawn Con Warren has for her wedding. Oh, as well. everything. <laughs> I'm going to be sponsored by 16. My wedding dress is just a Tommy Bow shirt. That's exactly what it is. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> the, it, the podcast is called Flop Culture. There's a few episodes up and it is so interesting. You just get lost in it. Loves it. I, I actually I really got lost in it yesterday. <sighs> Uh, Fanula, we will see you uh, for work next week in Ireland AM studio. We Don't officially... now. Martin's going to kill me. <laughs> I'm happy with you. You're bold. Fanula J, talk to you soon. Thanks a million. Thanks, guys. See Bye. You, Bye. That's Bye. a good spawn con by Tommy <laughs> Bow for my wedding dress. Yeah, I'll get you some nice shoes. Oh, thank you so much. I can't wait. Now, coming up, it's the Italia 90 rematch you have been waiting for. Now, think what could it be? So, Ray Houghton and Toto Scalacci, <laughs> they are facing off in a pizza making this challenge. This show is mental. Welcome Plus to Ireland AM. Uh, some lucky businesses that have conquered the odds to become a great success. See you after the <laughs> break. <laughs> The Great Pink Run with Glan Bia is back this year and takes place in Dublin on the 9th of October and Kilkenny on the 16th of October and participants can take part virtually. To raise awareness, we've teamed up with Breast Cancer Ireland and have seven brand new Fitbits to give away. This event is open to everyone of all ages and fitness levels with 10k and 5k options on the day. Breast Cancer Ireland guarantees a fun family day out with music, games and children entertainment along with festival style food ensuring entertainment for all the family registration is at greatpinkrun.ie all proceeds raised will support breast cancer ireland's research to be in with a chance to win simply answer this question what is the distance of a full marathon is it a 26.2 miles or b 46 miles to enter call 1550 999 333 or text prize to 57199 Hello. Hello, you're very welcome back. Um, some messages in. We were talking earlier on about um, 42%. Points of the black stuff. Half of Irish people plan on not going to the pub this winter. Half of Irish people. The way he said that. Um, it's 42% of people are cutting down on um, their pub visits. But I think that there's other issues at Many of them set to go out of business. But Ma go. Which is terrible because it's what keeps a community going as well. Matt has said, I drink uh, in the Bridge Tavern in Summerhill uh, Parade in Dublin. That's only a five or a pint. Great family run pub because that's been highlighted today in the papers is that it is about a quid in some areas of Dublin. Yeah, in certain for areas like the likes of Temple Bar and stuff are saying, that yes, exactly. Just less than eight euro for a pint of Guinness. I mean, it's insane. Now, Finney has got in touch to say, I run a pub in Sandy Mount, Dublin, for pints of Guinness are 550, Beamish 460, Larger starts at 460. So please don't lump us all in together. All pubs in Dublin are not, not in Temple Bar. Absolutely, Finney. Listen, fair play to your Absolutely. father that as well. But when we do see a uh, you know, the costs coming up in certain areas. And to think that you can sell a pint of Guinness for 550 and somebody else is then charging just less than eight euro. I mean, mm. it's pretty extortionate, isn't it? Yeah, you can, I had a, I had a night a few months back in a, in a GAA club. Some value in a GAA oh, club. Oh, you get good that value much. in there. Uh, now, we have got Ray Houghton and Toto Scalacci coming up on Ireland AM. If you haven't heard, if you weren't here earlier on, we'll tell you more about that in a minute. Uh, but James has said, in 1994, I was living in New Jersey. Uh, I got to mass late on the Saturday evening as I was watching Ireland versus Italy. And they were playing like in New Jersey, weren't they? Answer. My parish priest was from Ireland. He gave the shortest homily ever. Ireland's ahead by one. We don't need to pray for them. When I went up to receive, uh, to get communion, I saw he had a TV on in the sacristy. 
<laughs> Thank you for that, James. Everyone Cheers. was tuned into that one, James. Yeah, <laughs> listen, keep those messages uh, coming because you know what? We're just talking about Italian 90 right now. I think this is the rematch for the ages, the one we've all been looking forward to. Ray Houghton up against Toto Scalacci. Not with a football, though. Making pizza. Pizza. Yeah, that's coming up after the break, and I can't wait. Now, as they say, if you can't handle the heat, get out of the kitchen. <laughs> Things are heating up at the National Plan Championships in Leash. <laughs> Just leave that hanging in the air there. You really gave that welly. Um, Alan is about to host the ultimate pizza making challenge between two rival sports Who stars. Who could it be? Oh, my goodness. Are tensions running high, Alan? They certainly are, Warren. Yes, we are here at the Aldi Marquis at the National Ploughing Championships. And it's a bit of a, a rematch to Italian 90, yes, between two football legends. It's Ray Houghton on my right and on my left. <laughs> it's Toto Scalacci. Yes, well, welcome, lads, welcome. Now, this is the rematch, but we're doing it in pizza style. Now, Toto, very welcome to Ireland. Benvenuto in Irlanda, Toto. Thank you now, very much. You're very Grazie welcome. Mille. I mean, how have the Irish people, because you broke so many Irish hearts many years ago. Tu in Irlanda negli anni 90 hai rotto proprio il cuore a tutti gli irlandesi. Per quel gol. I'm sorry, but for me, for me, Italia win, win. Yes, for me, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're sorry now. Yeah. You're, you're sorry, sorry now. now. You're sorry yeah. now. So after I'm many sorry. years, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> Giorgio, tell us why we're here and we're doing this, because this okay, is a we... new pizza that's going into the Aldi store. Yes, we are here today for our Sorrento brand to integrate with uh, Aldi brand. It's called Carlos. In a couple of weeks, uh, we're launching to the Aldi, Aldi store or uh, uh, Carlos brand. So right. the story from Sorrento, we enjoyed the partnership, me and Steven Carr. I like today, Steven is look like Ray, <laughs> and I am look like, uh, like uh, Toto. Toto. <laughs> Just like an Italian and uh, but an surely, Irish man. Surely Toto would have the advantage here now being the Italian Ray. Do you think yeah. he's a little bit of bias? I was going to say, think, yeah. have you ever made a pizza before in your never, life? Never. Never. I had a little go yesterday. We went round to the factory yeah. and uh, Giorgio was kind enough to try and show us what we were doing. But I am really out of my comfort zone at the moment. He's a bit of a now, chef. Yeah, Toto, have you made pizza before? Yeah. I made la pizza qualche volta. Da piccolo ho fatto qualcosa. Da bambino, da, when, he baby, when he was a baby, when he was a baby, he tried to mix with a granny. Oh, and with so, your yes. granny. Yes. Yes. With your granny. Yes. And we were looking at the old thing, the old question here in Ireland, should you put pineapple on pizza? And Toto's literally yeah. going, no, pineapple <laughs> on pizza? But, no, no, this is fa schifo. Oh, fa schifo. <laughs> <laughs> what, what does that mean? It's it horrible. No, 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 horrible. No, 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 Yes! Oh, no, 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 throw it away! Throw it away! Don't you want to eat it? No, eat no, it. No, no, OK, we're having none of it. No, no. no pizza here this morning. No, no. OK, Jojo, you're going to show us what we're doing and then okay. the lads are going to uh, so have we, a go at it. So we have here the 24-hour the dough ball, so we show to the guys. What do you mean, so it's been in a, it's been like it's that 24 for 24 hours? hours. Yeah, they, they raise up and see all the, i show you inside it, all the fermentation. Look how the bubble, All so right. how they ferment, they're kicking up the dough and we pressing down by hand. Yes. Like what the guys tried to yesterday in the factory. All right. So we, this is like a, exactly the fresh dough ball where we are in Carlos. We get the dough, put some uh, a zero, a zero flour. flour, we design and pushing down. So at the way we are uh, pushing down to find the space to put uh, the hands in the middle. So, and oh, circulate. Oh, wow, look at that, yeah. This is like how we need to be circulate. So, how the way we circulate, this is in 12 in shape. Tadò, questa qui è una pizza nuova media. Ah, it's better. So, you, you do it better? better. Oh, no, yeah, we're, we're going to let you do it <laughs> in a minute. You, you, wait, we, you, you just hang on now, he's we, getting all excited we here. That. So, that's like the pizza. Yeah. So, we flip over. We take a little bit of flour, so you don't make And the... is the flipping very yeah. important? Impo yes. Important, you see? Oh, oh. look at this. Ah, it's not all. Oh, look tell you. at that. <laughs> so that's the dough. We got a tomato in the middle. Always all the ingredients. We yeah. start in the middle. 
Not, not too much sauce. Not too much. Okay. No. This no. This no. 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 Take this the pineapple no. over here. Okay. okay. So we got mozzarella. The mozzarella. Is it? We just put it like all the pinched mozzarella in the middle. Looks lovely, in fairness. Yeah, and, and then this is, is this ham? And that's uh, the is a hardy roast ham. Roast ham. Yeah, we put it like the ham. Everything with pizza, we don't cover like in a lasagna. We just uh, put a little bit a bite. Okay. So. And then is that go on one of these? Yeah. Do you want to put that on? I'll take it out sorry, of the way. Sorry, no, no, a little bit pineapple. Sorry. No. No, no, a little the, the bit pineapple. A little bit of pineapple. No, no, didn't know. But the pineapple. No, 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 no. no, no. Oh, Toto's no. having none of the pineapple. No, no, no. no, no. Well, put it on that. Yeah. There we go. I'm going to, I'm going to take this out of the way. Yeah. Because Ray. Are you ready for this? <laughs> Toto, Toto's really into this. Hey. Okay, okay. Ray, okay. yes, you start, Toto, I you think. start. So look, Let's oh, go, look Ray. at this, he, he has Ray. it all. Fresh, 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 yeah. fresh, 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 no fresh. bullshit. Look at that, round, Ray, 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 round, round. Come on, Ray, so Ireland's, Ireland's yes, relying yes, on you here. Yes. Ireland is relying come on, on Ray Houghton here. Come on. <laughs> And Giorgio, right. this Don't. new brand of pizzas will be in the shops. They, they go in the in shop the in the next few weeks. Yeah, next few weeks. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. We just uh, are, uh, signed an agreement with Aldi in the next couple of weeks. We cool. are the factory ready the to do ready a to lot go. of uh, pallet, thousand packets. And in fairness, Ireland, we love our pizzas in Ireland. Yeah, we really do. Love, yeah, love. we love our pizzas. I see at the moment that they, it's really popular. Ah, oh, come on, Ray, you're letting us down. Oh, we're giving, he's giving him a new one. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Ray? You're letting the side down. Look at there you go. Go, go, Toto go, 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 has it. Oh, Toto go, 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 is really go, go, go. good here. Go. Look at that. Look at that. Now we're cooking. Oh, look, Toto's throwing it in the R. Ray, come on. Yeah. Come on, let's go. Come, come on, on, Ray. Come on, Ray. Come on. Very good, lads. Very good, Toto. Bye, 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 Toto. Push, push, Toto. The pizza, they don't need to be all in the middle. So we, need, right? we need to be nice and simple. Oh, yeah, but it's OK. Look OK, it. start putting your sauces on. Look at that dog. Oh, look. Will you, look will you stop dog. helping them? They're supposed to be doing it themselves. <laughs> Put the sauces on. Yeah. Ray, start putting your sauce on. Yes. There we go. It's quite easy. <laughs> yeah. So go with the mozzarella. Ray, would you eat a pizza? Yes, indeed, I oh, would. Oh, you would eat a pizza? But not, not with pineapple on it. Not no. with pineapple, no, okay. no, no. We know now. Good there we go. go. Look we have that. to make That's these good. now. We could, we could nearly that auction up. these off. Pizza that made up. by Ray Houghton and Toto's that Galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a ham. That's it. Yeah. Oh, come on, come on, Toto. Put come some on, ham Toto. on. Toto. Come on, come on with ham, yeah? Let's go. Let's go. Not bad, Ray, not, not bad. bad. Pineapple or not? What do you yeah, think? go, you go with the pineapple, with the Ray, because it's an Irish favourite. Todo. You don't want pineapple, no? Ananas, todo, ananas. No. Put it okay, on that, Ray. Ray, put it on that. All right, Ray. Oh, Easy does it. Oh, Ray. Yay, there we go, Ray Houghton's pizza. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Very good. Pizza, Take a bow. And told him. So, Giorgio, who do you think is the best pizza? Or should we say it's a draw? Todo. Yeah. A draw. What do you think? Come on, be honest. Come on, who, who is it? It's good to pizza. No, I think, I think Ray Todo. has it. No, no, no. You kill all the age, no, no. No, <laughs> don't need to be killed. No, no, no. no, 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 no. All right. Look at that. It's a, that's a pizza. I need that's to a pizza. I think, I think Ireland won. Yay, Ray! Ireland won. Yay! Ireland won. Sorry, Toto. Sorry. You can only break our hearts once. <laughs> Thank you for that. Oh, that was a bit of fun. Uh, as I say, we are here till live till 10 o'clock. Drop down if you are heading to the ploughing. And of course, we'll hear tomorrow as well. But for the moment, thank you to Toto Slashy, Ray Houghton. Thank you. <laughs> to, thank you so thank you, much. Alan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, look back to studio, guys. <laughs> uh, thanks very much, Al. Well done, Ray. Well done, Ray. And if that doesn't make Gogglebox, what are we here for? <laughs> I mean, what, what are we? What are we here for? You know? Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> Still to come, we've got your daily fashion fix on the catwalk. Mandy's got a lot to live up to. That's all I'm saying. We'll talk to you in a second.
welcome back. Now, as we move into autumn, it's time to infuse some more colour into our wardrobes, which I totally knew yesterday when I decided to wear this this morning. <laughs> I think you missed the memo on that I one. I changed like five times this morning, to be fair. You so, did. Sorry about Silas that. Silas Mandy Maurer is here to talk to us about the making powerful, bold moves with colour. Oh, Good I'm morning, loving Mandy. the intro, guys. Thank you. But we were wearing always... the exact same thing this morning and we had to get changed. <laughs> well, I had to get changed and then it turns out that you didn't wear that outfit. I know, I got changed. Anyway. Yeah. Let's talk about other, other people. Other so people. It's, it's all about morning. colours. Because obviously, like, sometimes coming into autumn, it can be very predictable, autumn colours can be. So this morning, we I think we've peered away a little bit from that. And it's great to be able to embrace colour because we all have different skin tones. We were on about that earlier on when it came on, but it's it's important to make sure it's not because of fashion to pick an outfit. It really is down to the colours that will suit you because a colour can either make or break you as a person by making you brighter and looking really well and fresh or can absolutely drown so you out and kill it's you. It's about your skin tone, actually, how it will pull off a colour as well, much so. as opposed to what colour is picked. Very much so. coming out first. It's like the warm and the cool colours so that's what we're actually on about this morning. Okay. So it's important, very important. Now, our looks this morning, we're actually heading to Nace for both of our boutiques this morning, and this is from Nicola Ross. And again, like that, it is about bracing colour. As we see here with Igna, she's quite a, a brownish skin tone, so it actually works quite well. A sallow skin tone, these particular colours work really well okay. for someone that's of English skin, okay. skin tones. Now, you, you know me for fashion from a point of view, I love a good wrap or a good scarf. How do you style it? I'm, I'm probably a little bit predictable. I love it down one side. Sorry, is that a scarf? It actually yes. is. Oh, wow. So we just right. pop, popped it over one shoulder and it just gives the, the dress itself a little bit something, a little bit edgier without, if you're not a person that maybe isn't into too much, adding too much accessories, this adds, I think, great little shape. It's lovely. It. And, it's and if so you reasonable. run fast, like you'll take off. <laughs> <laughs> do you reckon? But there's a cake? variety of colours. <laughs> And indeed, so it is nice and it just works well. And we just tied it in on the It actually looks great. It's, it's lovely. It's a good way to mix it up, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. And it's just bit, been, about being clever how you style pieces. Italy. This gorgeous dress, again, it's a brand new print that's in uh, that's in store that has just arrived. And it's all of the leaf prints, as you can see, mixing of pinks, oranges and navy. Very nice. And that's got to sit up the side, a little bit of a polka and you're good to go. And it has a pocket detail as well. It's a lovely dress. Well. like that dress. Nice. Yeah. So say if you don't have a clue what colours you are, we're Look at the second one now. This is Pam coming out, and this is gorgeous. But say you don't know what your skin tone is, you can go and get. I remember Bridget Jones used to get it done. Yeah. She got it done in Debenhams back in the day in the book. <laughs> yeah, she went and got her colours done. And there's still places that actually do offer colour assistance as well. If you're just the person that really don't know, I would highly recommend you. Okay, right. yeah, that's absolutely. Good. This is Pam. This is Pam, and this is from Nicola Ross as well, of course, online or indeed as you can pop into her boutique in Nace. But I'm loving this as well because, again, like that, it's a great colour and it's quite a colour you can wear any time of year, whether it's after coming out of spring, summer, right through, as we know now, obviously autumn, winter. We popped it over the shoulder as well. We just wanted to make it a little bit more chicer and, and um, chestier this morning. And would people be nervous about wearing bright colours like that? Some are. And, yeah. and this is what fashion is about, Tommy. Don't get pigeonholed into the one look, into the one thing. Go yeah. out and have a day that you can try on a load of clothes. And you'll get assistance in any of the boutiques to be able to tell you what you should be wearing or what you shouldn't be wearing. Okay. And that's why I said with colour, why not wear it? It absolutely always brightens us all up. We went with this gorgeous little fun dress then underneath. It's like that doll kind of style dress. Yeah. You could easily, as you know, wear and you could add a belt if you wanted to as well. We didn't. We left it quite loose, which is going to be very much the season trend. Absolutely. Okay. Loose. All loose. Yeah. Mm, very much Very so. like a little bit of Lexus from, um, from Schitt's Creek. Yeah. They're loose you shows where the loose tracks are. Okay. And um, so that's it, yeah. So just finishing off Lovely the full little look. Just, yeah, tying, tying the whole look together. I'm loving the colours on this too because it's not overpowering, but yet it's nice to see the dash. Fabulous. Thank you for that, so Pam. And Kaylee's coming out. So now we're heading to Aria Boutique, another boutique I work with quite a lot and it always has fabulous styles come up. And we saw this look earlier on with this black colour. Yeah, Again, lovely. all one colour. People sometimes don't know whether to put black together by wearing the orange on top and bottom, but it really, really works. Is orange in at the minute? Huge. Okay. Absolutely. But if you see, again, with something like that, a friend of mine, um, who sh she's South African and it's gorgeous with her skin tone. She wears, she's great with orange. I'm the whitest woman alive. So it could end up washing you that's out. That's the thing, right? Okay, so that's what people need to know. Back from her holidays. Back from Greece. So she's looking fabulous yeah. anyway this morning. We, we had gorgeous little earrings. We just spotted them there a minute ago, which were really beautiful. And again, like that, just picking up, the, the obviously has the orange little um, jewel drop there, as you can see on that. But the orange in it is this it's just Gorgeous, stunning. beautiful outfit. It. And again, like that, I'm a big fan of mixing and matching outfits and pieces. 
this jumper can be worn with so many other pieces, whether it's with jeans, whether it's with um, leathery style leggings. Mm. It just is a really fabulous piece, I think. Mm, it and is amazing quality. Beautiful and tucked in, loose leggings, all that kind of Tucked in, loose kind of and stuff. styled. It went with the pleated skirt. That pleated skirt works really well. And I would also say to people, sometimes people feel when they're carrying a little bit of extra weight, they're sometimes terrified to wear pleats. Yes. Don't be, particularly if you have a good quality skirt like this. Right. Because the good quality skirt, the pleat is way more, it's better, better fitting and it's better quality. Heavier. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So it's not going to showcase, so it is for everybody. What about the bag that we just saw as well? The little bag, then we just went with a small little bag mm -hmm. just to add a bit of, we went with the black, we kept it quite simple, but I'm loving the boots. Yeah. Oh my God, I think these are a must. And again, like that, you'll have them forever. They're unbelievable. They're an investment piece quality boot, but again, like that, you can wear them in anything. You could wear idea. them to the plowing championships as well. No, no hassle. Wear them you, wherever you, you want. actually could do. It's exactly where Absolutely. Kaylee's going. I love how you've gone industrial and Lovely. oversized, and that's yeah. beautiful. Thank you, yeah, really love the look. And we're staying that? with Aria oh. Boutique in oh, Nice. And again, also available online, but this is just wow. mm. it's stunning. And we stayed with the block colour again. Yeah. Because again, like that. And again, it's back to mixing and matching. This particular outfit you could absolutely wear with anything else you already have in your wardrobe by the jacket, or the jeans, anything like that. Went with these gorgeous um, blue tone earrings, first of all, which again, like that, picks up on the blue in the jacket. So it's just a Yeah. And then the Bring gorgeous the shirt. Together. Then with the beautiful blouse that's underneath this jacket. Love the rope detail, by the way, on that jacket. It works really well. But underneath, we went with the blouse um, where you're right. And again, a beautiful satin blouse. It would work well whether you're going for a ladies' lunch or indeed if you're somebody that really dresses up well for work, for a business look, I think something like that. The shoulders are great on that. It's stunning. Yeah. Isn't it? And really again, like that, the quality of it is incredible. But the trousers as well. Phenomenal trousers. Igna was delighted at six foot tall that the trousers were actually fitting her on <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm um, loving this, but again with the pocket detail, as I said, the quality is incredible on this, but nothing like a good, strong power suit either. Yeah. That's what it's all about, the power suit. I love well. that, as you mentioned, uh, the jacket's off, that detail, the tie and the tie is, isn't it cute, is excellent. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And then the shoes, And finally... just finished up there with just the little sandals then, yeah, to bring it all together. Went for the, that, again, like that, there's lots of different variety of footwear you could wear with that, but we wanted to keep it quite dressy this morning. Beautiful. Just beautiful. I tell you Thank what, you Warren, I can't wait to see you wearing this tomorrow now. Colour Power blocking. Suit. That's Color what I'm going to be doing. Talk about colouring and don't be afraid to bring colour into your wardrobe. And definitely, I would suggest from a skin tone point of view, get somebody to help you out if you do need help. It's always worth it because it makes you completely looking either washed out or looking completely amazing. OK. Yeah, Find out your colour. Do you know what colour you are? Sure, listen, with the bad fake tan I put on, who knows you what's know, going you on all, You can put a black all. bag and you all Andy Mara, well. thank, you thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Thank you. Brilliant. Cheers. Uh, coming up, we're going to go back to the ploughing in Leash to meet some award-winning business owners. That's coming up after this short break. Welcome back. Alan is at the National Ploughing Championships in Leash with some winners. Oh, what's the atmosphere like in Leash, Al? How are we getting on? Well, Tommy, the atmosphere really building here. There's actually hundreds of peeping people coming into the Aldi Marquee now. And uh, we are going to be chatting now to some savvy entrepreneurs whose products impress so much that they've won the prize of the Grow With Aldi competition. But before we chat to them, let's chat to Michael Murphy from Board B. A good morning to you, Michael. And tell us just how important is something like this? Because we're seeing businesses saying they're going to be struggling with the winter ahead. How important is winning a prize like this for small businesses? Businesses. It's hugely important to get a showcase for your products and uh, we're delighted in Bordbia to work with Aldi on this project because it brings great Irish companies to the market. It gives them an opportunity to showcase their products to the consumers and that's what builds the food industry long term. Innovation, great companies, great people. And we are, we're looking at these going into all the Aldi stores, so that's amazing for them. It's a fabulous opportunity to get into stores, and Aldi really help these suppliers by putting them on the shelf. They've won delivery, and they really support them in it. And we in Bordbia partner with Aldi in terms of learning and development so those companies can succeed. OK, well, let's meet the companies then. Thank you very much. Um, and we're going to start with Heather. Good morning to you, Good Heather. Morning. So tell us about your company, what it's, what's it called? And the, it started in the cafe. Yeah, I have a cafe. It's called Bullion Blaster. It's in Spittle, and we do a range of products, uh, kind of condiments and sauces that were born in the cafe for the cafe menu. 
and they became so popular we started putting them in jars and now we have a range so they were Ireland. literally just the condiments that were on the yeah, tables just, or people would be having like yeah. so with your with your ham sandwich exactly. you'd be getting the mayo the smoked onion mayonnaise yeah a one-of-a-kind product that you can't get anywhere else and you were you were saying that during lockdown that this just grew because people were going because i think we all did it during lockdown yeah. and it's something we should be doing is to continue to buy irish oh it was incredible we just it just became a phenomenon in itself um we grew i'd say our, uh, four times in in lockdown and the popularity grew and then word of mouth and um and now with growth aldi we're just we're nationwide it's incredible so were you delighted obviously when you heard because the products i mean because businesses are going to like small business like yourself when you when you're here at the cost of living crisis and energy energy bills yeah. now are you noticing that in your little cafe we have we've noticed it but we're kind of bracing ourselves for the winter we're not quite sure what to expect yeah. um but this helps kind of i suppose secure we know that we have the contract we know that we have the business and uh, and we're looking so, forward to people having access nationwide be careful because you'll never go back to real mayonnaise oh would oh, you have this? Oh yeah, oh. it's good. It's delicious. It's good, isn't Congratulations. it? Congratulations. Thank, Thank you very so much. much. Thank you. Green, Holly's Bakery, tell yes, us um, more. Well, sure. We were founded back way back in 1953. My father's uncle started the business and I suppose I became involved then uh, roughly about 10 years ago. So um, got a handle on the business, I suppose. So. I'm relatively new at it compared to my father. Yeah. So. And this is the one that won the prize for yeah. you. It's the yeah. ice cherry log. So exactly, who came up yeah. with the idea of the ice cherry log? Well, I suppose we had always done a log and we had done different trials and different ideas. And we said, yeah, yeah sure, look, we'll, we'll come up, we'll try some icing on it. We had seen it done before. But we'll see how it goes. So my sister actually entered it into Grow with Aldi for us. And, and we were delighted to get accepted into it. And then. Obviously delighted to be here now as one of the, the five finalists. Because founded in 1953, so your the bread is in the bread. Did you yeah. ever think of entering any of the breads, or was that was this we, the thing? We did. We would have entered different breads over the years, the last couple of years. But I suppose they were things that Ali already possibly had on mm. the shelves. So I suppose the ice cherry log. We did a bit of research. And ice Can I have a little log. taste of the ice oh, cherry log? Definitely, yeah. Okay, yeah and yeah. it is the icing is the thing. It's the topping, as they oh, say. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what gets people in. I think. Mm. It's delicious. <laughs> Thanks How important much. is that now for you to get this product into oh, on the Aldi it's, store? It's massive, like for a small bakery like us, we're only in a small little region. Like um, we probably our, our delivery region is probably 30 to 40, 60 kilometres. Like, so for us to be nationwide is just it's just massive. And how many you people know. are working for you? We have currently now because of this, we had to take on extra staff, obviously. So at the minute now we have uh, 17 staff. 17. Yeah, yeah. And so. do you hope to grow? We do, yeah, definitely. Grow, grow with Aldi. Grow, more, with, Aldi. grow with Aldi. More and more. Punch. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, it's a great story. Congratulations. Thanks and very we much. go over to Matthew now. Matthew, I love this story. So tell us about how Sibley started. So it was actually quite natural, really. I, like all of us, once we move out of college or move to college from home, we end up having to kind of look after ourselves. And I just started baking. Had you baking. cooked ever cooked before? I had, just a small bit. Just a small bit, but then um, you were doing these. I wasn't yeah. an aficionado, I don't know, by any means. <laughs> but then I just kind of started doing a bit more. And the energy balls came about by the big thing I found was when you went to college lecture, you could be there for an hour or two. You have your bar of chocolate, you get the high, and you know the crash, and you can't focus, you're wrecked. So I looked at designing kind of a product I could have on the go, whether it was before training, in the car, with a coffee. And I think that's the big thing about them as well. They're very diverse. We don't use any preservatives, sugar, none of that. It's all natural ingredients, Irish oats, everything. Where possible is Irish. Yeah. And it just kind of developed from there. Um, and here we are today. So it's amazing. So you were just literally taking something that you were doing, bringing to college yourself. So when did they sort of say, oh, I'm going to develop this and make a business out of it? You know, I'm probably asked that regularly enough now and I can't even, I can't even tell you the answer. Um, it started at a Christmas market in North Cork and Cantork. And obviously, look, it was 2nd or 3rd of December. Nobody wants a healthy energy ball. Yeah. They want they cheesecakes, want food, they want rocky yeah. rolls and whatnot. Hot so, stews and things exactly, like that. Yeah. Yeah. So we ended up doing all sweet stuff then. Then we rolled into COVID. Nobody wanted, they didn't want to see a healthy energy ball. So we were doing lots of cheesecakes. And then, since COVID kind of came to an end, everyone's back on the healthy buzz. Thank God. Thank God. And so they've been going really well. We've been very, very fortunate. The Aldi opportunity has been huge. And how many staff do you have? We have about 12 to 15 about between 12 to 15. And do you hope to grow with Aldi like, like everyone else yeah, here this morning? Yeah, absolutely. That's the plan. And take more um, people on. It is. Look, we wouldn't be in the position we're in if it wasn't for the local support we've received in Belly Desmond, Port Kerry, and the shops that gave us a chance on day one. And I think the most important thing there is that we're able to give back in the smallest of ways, whether it's through employment or 
sponsoring a football yeah. team or whatever it may be. And Breen and Heather, I mean, like, it's a challenging time now at the moment, but with something like this, it, it obviously gives you a bit more confidence, would it? Oh, definitely, yeah. Like, for to get taken on and something like that, know that our product is good enough to, to compete with the 200 odd companies that originally mm. applied, like, gives us great great stead going going forward you know yeah and it's fantastic to have access to, for all our customers nationwide to have access to the product yeah it's just incredible well listen congratulations and we have to say as well that Vale and Acre and Hanley's Puddings were also winners there was five winners announced here this morning and there and that, that was the five of them and we just had time to chat to the three of you so it was lovely chatting to you thank you, thank you very much well that's it from the National Ploughing Championships for today we are back live tomorrow from 7 till 10 o'clock with some great guests lined up, but uh, from everybody here today and the crowds here beside, give Ireland Am a big wave. Give them all a big wave. Oh, we'll see you back here tomorrow. Very much, Thanks, Alan. Al. Listen, fair play to Aldi. I know somebody who got a business into that similar thing as well, and it has propelled their business. Changes so lives. It's great to see as well. Congratulations. Now, on tomorrow's show, of course, Alan is back for day two of the Ploughing Championships. He's going to be chatting to TikTok star Tig Fleming and chef Catherine Fulvio. Plus, back here in studio, he's an Irish man abroad comedian and podcaster. Jarrett Regan will be dropping by for a chat. Yes, all that. Plus, the news, sport, and weather. We shall see you back here tomorrow from 7. Now, Holly and Phil in this morning. It's going to be a good one. <laughs>